Hello dear subscribers and watchers, it's me, Waves from SlideNerd here. In this video, I'm going to talk about chat preferences in Android. For those of you guys who are hearing this word for the first time, chat preferences are the simplest mechanism to store data in Android. You don't have to worry about creating files, you don't have to worry about using file APIs to access, you simply have an XML file which is created and automatically managed for you guys. All you gotta do is put the data into it and get the data from it. That's all we need to do with shared preferences. So let's get started with this. The first step that we're gonna talk about is what are shared preferences. So they store key value pairs. Now if you guys are again new to this word key value pairs, think of it as something like this. Your first name is Bugs, last name is Bunny, location is Earth, password is 123. All these types of information has something on the right side which is the value, has something on the left side which is the key. And what you want to do is store the value and then use the appropriate key to get that value later and that is what key value pairs are all about. So shared preferences are used to store data in key value pairs like a bundle object. The data is stored inside an XML file in the data slash data slash package name slash shared prefs folder. Now like I said you don't have to worry about creating this XML file or accessing it or setting the permissions and stuff. Everything is simply done for you guys. And that is why this is the simplest data storage mechanism of all. Next, you can store data like username, password. Now we will be talking about the applications of shared preferences in just a few slides. So now let's talk about what kind of data can be stored. It can be your primitive types like booleans, int, long, strings, and of the latest version, you can store string arrays, but that's it. If you wanna store a table, you wanna store primary keys, column data, like an order ID kind of stuff, then use an SQLite database. Shared preferences are not meant for this such data. For further knowledge about this, you can check out my video called Android Data Storage Options to which I will include a link in the description text below. So be sure to check it out. Now let's see what can be done with shared preferences further. So the next question is how to access them. Now your app can have a single preference file where you can store everything. In that case, call get preferences with this int mode. Or you can have several files that belong to your app. In that case, call get shared preferences with the name of the file and int mode. So the next question you guys obviously ask me is what is this int mode? It's something like this. If you say mode private, it means only your app can access the file. Mode world readable, all apps can read the file. Writable, all apps can write the file. And multi-process, which means multiple processes can modify the same shared preference file. And we'll be talking about that in a little bit about processes and threads when we talk about that in Android. But for now, there is something you guys need to remember. The readable and mode world writable options are deprecated as of now. I just mentioned them here because I wanted you guys to be aware that such options did exist at some time. As of KitKat, they don't exist anymore. So now, let's talk further about the applications of shared preferences. What can you do with them? First, you can probably check if the user is visiting your app for the first time like maybe checking some kind of counter or maybe asking the user some detail, storing it. You can check for updates like when your app was last updated. Every time you download an update, simply store the time and the date inside the shared preference file. Then you can have the credentials like remembering the username and password for the user's Dropbox login so that the next time they go in, you don't have to ask them things again and again, right? Then you can have the user settings like maybe the user says that he doesn't want the portrait mode to be used ever so you can probably lock that up inside your settings and ultimately there is something called location caching where you can get the user's last known position and store it inside a shared preference file so that the next time the user comes inside your app it shows that hey last time you were at this location when you started the app kind of stuff so we'll be talking about all these further so now let's talk about how to store data using shared preference very simple get a reference to the shared preferences object which is responsible for putting data and getting data from it. If you have a single file in your app, call get preferences. If you have several files, call get shared preferences with the string name, that is the name of the file, and int mode, which we discussed previously just now. Next, call the editor. Now, there is an object called shared preferences dot editor, which is responsible for doing all the updates, which means adding the data kind of stuff. So you can use the editor to add whatever data you want with a key. For example, you can have key as name, value as John, 
and put that here inside and then commit the changes inside the editor now very shortly you will know why we need this key and we're over here so now let's talk about how to retrieve the data from shared preference file to retrieve the data get a reference to the shared preferences object in the same way which we just discussed right now use the key you provided earlier to get the data for example you can say give me the value for the key name and the database or the XML file will say here is the value which is John and this is the reason why you used the key in the previous step so that you can use it to later access the data or the value which you stored now of course you have to handle default values if the data is not found which will be looking in code so don't worry about it too much so now let's talk about our simple example which will be running in the next video what we have is two activities a and b there is a save button which is gonna put some data inside the shared preferences file and there's a load button inside activity B that's gonna get the data from our shared preferences file so we'll be seeing this in action in the next video in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video let us know your thoughts about what data storage option you prefer in Android and which one you think is the best in the meantime I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day